I am about to start working on my rudder. Normally the rudder is one of the first things you build on the empennage kit, um, but I kind of have been putting it off for one reason, and that is I want to add rudder trim, uh, some rudder trim tabs, or a rudder trim tab on the rudder. Uh, so the ailerons, as well as the horizontal stabilizers, both come with trim tabs on the stock Vans RV10 kit. The rudder does not, and there's a lot of disagreement online as to whether or not you even need to add uh, rudder trim tab on the rudder. Most people, a lot of people say you don't need to, you don't need to, um, but it might make some things nice. Um, regardless, I want to add a trim tab on the rudder, so I'm going to do that. One of the most common ways that people do it that I've seen online is either put some piano hinge right about here or cut into the rudder itself and create a tim, trim tab uh, right about the middle of the rudder right here. Um, I thought about doing that but decided against it largely because to build some of the internal structures from scratch to kind of support that trim tab was, I, I have a sneaking feeling that I'm going to screw that up and I don't want to order new parts. So I've kind of decided to go with the piano hinge. Um, I didn't want to mount it here though. I like how it looks if you mount it down towards the bottom of the rudder. Um, I've seen that done on Cessnas. A lot of times they'll have a trim tab, uh, what is it called, a non-adjustable trim tab um, uh, down at the bottom. Um, and I kind of like the look a little bit better. Plus it's more in line with the rudder cables. Um, I don't know, I'm doing it that way. Um, part of the reason why I wanted to go with the piano hinge is it's less technically demanding to put it on there. Plus I can take it off or it's easier to adjust later on if I want to. Um, uh, but it does present a couple problems. One of them is the servo now is to be mounted a little bit more towards the rear than if I mounted it up here. And that changes the center of gravity more, which is going to change the natural frequency of the rudder ver vertical stabilizer combination. Um, and that's a problem because of flutter. Now, flutter is what you get when there's vortex shedding or somehow oscillations coming off your control surfaces that are equal or close to being equal to the natural frequency of that control surface. Um, and that can cause the, the look up flutter on YouTube. You can see videos of where the control service will start to vibrate and snap off basically. So everything has a natural frequency. Your oven has a natural frequency with regard to temperature inputs. Um, a swing is probably the best way to illustrate a natural frequency. Um, a swing at a playground has a natural frequency. Um, so you kind of intuitively know what that is. If you just pump back and forth really fast, the swing is going to stay there. If you pump back and forth really slow, the swing won't move. But if you can kind of feel it, if you pump back and forth um, with the natural frequency of the swing, you'll start to swing higher and higher and higher. Um, so everything has a natural frequency. Buildings have a natural frequency. If you know what the natural, the frequency of an earthquake is in a given area, you make sure you don't want to build your buildings such that the natural frequency of the building is similar to the earthquake. It's part of making a building that's uh, more resistant to earthquakes. Regardless, I'm changing uh, the center of gravity here, which might change the natural frequency of the rudder vertical stabilizer combination. And I don't know what to do about that. I don't know that it's a huge problem. Um, I'll probably add a little bit more weight to counterbalance this or counteract this. Um, you add some weights up there. Maybe I'll add a little bit more weight. Um, anyway, that's my first concern with doing this. Uh, also, on the flip side of the piano hinge right here, it kind of sticks out, uh, so it's not like an even break on the, or it's not a fine point when the, this wind comes off the, the air comes off the rudder, um, and so that's going to want to push the rudder to the left a little bit. Of course, if I deflect this to the left, it'll push the rudder to the right, so it should counteract that. Anyway, um, I've thought about some of these things, and I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Uh, <laughs> Trust me, I'm on the internet. It won't be an issue. It's totally going to work. Regardless, I'm going to put the uh, trim tab right here. I've spent a lot of time yesterday kind of measuring things out, and I'm satisfied with how things are going to go. So from this point, I just need to start working on the rudder. Um, I've kind of cut all the pieces, tr uh, processed them and all that. So I basically need to cut a hole in here now, I mount the servo in there, cut some hole right here for the control arm coming out, and uh, then prime everything and put it all together. So. This is my thoughts on how I'm going to do my rudder trim tab. Um, I kind of like the idea right now. Maybe in a few minutes as I get into this, a few hours, I'm going to get really pissed off and destroy the part somehow and I wish I had never put rudder trim on the rudder. Anyway, uh, that's basically it. So now I just need to start working on things and hopefully everything will go smoothly and I'll be able to finish this rudder pretty quick, maybe this week. We'll see.
finished creating the uh, trim tab for the rudder, um, at least the parts for it. Um, right now I'm going to kind of rivet together the piece, the little trim tab itself that's sticking off the rudder. Um, so I have this, I think it's one inch extruded piano hinge right here. It's going to mount on the bottom of the rudder. Then I have this kind of extending uh, piece of metal, a uh, piece of aluminum sheet. Uh, it's kind of thick. I think it's like, um, I can't remember. It's one of the thicker ones. Um, and it's going to stick together like this. Then I have these two little things right here that's going to stick on like that. And that's going to uh, attach to the clevis from the uh, servo motor, um, the trim motor. So that's what's going to kind of wiggle side to side. Now, what I've done, because I don't want manufactured heads for the rivets sticking out, so what I've done is I've actually countersunk both sides of this. And I'm going to put the uh, manufactured heads on this side. Then on this side, I'm going to kind of hit it with the back rivet gun and kind of smush down the shop head into the countersink. So I'm not going to have it sticking out um, the full way like uh, you normally do when you're riveting pieces of metal together. Um, and so in a way, it's kind of like what you do on the trailing edge. You know, you're trying to basically smash the shop head uh, flush with the skin. Um, so you don't want the rivet sticking up quite as much. Anyway, um, I'm not sure if this is, it's probably not as strong of a way to do it. On the other hand, I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know, 20 rivets holding this to this. So I think it should be strong enough. Um, regardless, that's what I'm going to do. I finished riveting the rudder trim tab. This is going to be on the bottom of the rudder, kind of sticking out from the trailing edge. And uh, the shop heads or the machine uh, machine heads are nice and flush. Obviously, I countersink that. And then the shop heads that I put on inside of a countersink, uh, they're not quite flush, but they're flush enough. finished riveting the uh, stiffeners to both rudder skins. This is the uh, right side of the rudder. There's the other one kind of over there out of view of the camera. But the stiffeners purpose is to, um, is to make the rudder stiffer. So I've got these suckers on. I've uh, riveted the shear clips here. There's a kind of bottom part and a top part of each of these. And the next step I'm ready to do is kind of, I need to get this uh, the uh, left rudder skin and kind of fold it onto here. And as I'm doing it, I'm going to be riveting it in place. Um, also, I need to get the uh, trailing edge wedge and I need to put uh, tank sealant all over it and kind of fasten that, stick it there while I'm doing the whole thing. So it, it's kind of a complicated operation. Um, I've gone through a dry run with it and I think I can get it smoothly now. But um, uh, hopefully I'll have a friend come over and help me with it. Other wise I'm going to be stuck doing this on my own, which will be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I think I can do it. Anyway, uh, after I do that, then I need to wait about two weeks or so. I found it takes quite a while for the uh, tank sealant to totally uh, cure. Um, and then I will uh, take it off, kind of do what I did on the um, elevator's trailing edge, rivet them so they're the trailing edge so it's flush. Uh, and all that. And then I need to curl up these edges and finish some other, a few other things on the rudder. But after I put the second half of the rudder on top of this one, most of the hard work is going to be done. Um, so anyway, I uh, guess I'll keep on working. Actually putting together the uh, two rudder halves was uh, went a little easier than I thought. Uh, fortunately, I had the help of a friend, which made a lot of a difference. Um, although I probably could have done it on my own, it just would have been messier and probably taken longer. 
And now I think about it, I probably would have screwed something up. Regardless, it wasn't as bad as I thought. So that now that two halves are together, we've uh, riveted the trailing edge together really tightly. I have these kind of uh, L-beams or angle iron, angle aluminum that I got from Home Depot. And I drilled holes for each of the places on the uh, uh, trailing edge, and that should keep it straight. So I have some angle right here, and then I have some angle underneath that I use on the uh, elevators. Um, so now I basically have to wait for a week, maybe two weeks. I found that at least in my climbing, it takes about two weeks, maybe even three weeks, two or three weeks for the uh, tank sealant to fully set. Um, and I'll probably wait two weeks at least to uh, rid, it this, rid it this together because I want to make sure it's as uh, strong as possible so I don't get any waves um, and get the uh, trailing edge as straight as possible. Um, anyway, so now for me, I got to wait two weeks on this. Uh, I'll probably turn my attention next to kind of finish up some riveting on the tail cone. Um, Regardless, two weeks from me or so until I finish up the rudder. But fortunately for you, it won't take two weeks. It'll take about two seconds. And just like that, time, enough time has passed and the uh, Pro Seal is set. I actually, it's been about a week since I first put this together um, or put the Pro Seal on. Uh, I was planning on make, waiting two weeks or so, but I have uh, some of the Pro Seal from the uh, tube that I used and it it's pretty solid. It looks like it's set up pretty much. It's been warm and humid here lately, and so I think that's helped. I have some Pro Seal from another tube that I used earlier in the build, and it's about as solid as this sucker, which has been out and curing for months. So I think I'm good. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, rivet the trailing edge. Um, it's going to be a little bit tricky where I have the uh, uh, trim tab, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to kind of go through with the back rivet gun and kind of partially set each of these rivets in kind of some way random fashion. Um, and then I'm going to go through and set them the rest of the way. That worked really well on the elevators in getting a straight uh, trailing edge. Hopefully it'll work well here. Uh, then after I do that, I'm going to rivet the rest of this thing together and basically finish up the rudder. I think I can get it all done today, although I'm not sure if I'm going to be that ambitious because it's going to warm up today. Also, the temperature right now at 75 degrees, that's not bad. It's supposed to get hotter. And I do have a swamp cooler. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, this thing tells me the, it's a humidity o meter and right now I'm at 66% humidity, which is kind of high for my area. Uh, and that means the swamp cooler is not going to work, so it's probably going to get pretty hot in here. Uh, regardless, I think I'll be able to finish up the rudder today and uh, I'm going to get after it. Okay, so I'm about to do the trailing edge. I've already kind of partially set four rivets, but basically my method that I'm using, I kind of talked about it earlier, is specifically every fourth rivet I'm partially setting you know, maybe about halfway there by, you know, doing a few taps with the uh, back rivet set. Um, then after doing every fourth one, I'm going to do the ones there's every fourth one. That means there's three rivets in the middle that I didn't do. I'm going to pick the middle one, go through and do all those. And then I'm going to do all the rest of them, um, all about 50% set. Then I'm going to go through with kind of, I could probably finish it off with the, uh, 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 back rivet set, um, and I think I actually might do that. The last time what I did is I have these these set uh, trailing edge dies from Cleveland that I can use the squeezer. Um, well, I think, uh, I think I'm actually gonna go back to those because those don't quite bang it up as, as much at the very end. So I'll probably just go through, set everything 50% using the back rivet set, um, and then use the Cleveland, Cleveland uh, trailing edge dies with the squeezer to finish everything off. So um, the only issue that I kind of have is these rivets are sticking out this much uh, on the trailing edge, except for uh, where I have the trim tab um, piano hinge. Um, and I've upsized the rivet by about a half size, um, of course, but it's still not sticking out quite as much. So these suckers, I'm not sure what to do about that. The next size up, it sticks out way too much. Um, I think it'll be, <laughs> I don't know, it'll probably work. So I'm going to go through and do that right now.
So I just finished uh, riveting the trailing edge of the rudder and I checked it out by eyeballing it and it looks super straight. I got the angle aluminum uh, and put it on there and it's just perfectly straight. Like I don't even think it's off by a 32nd or a 64th of an inch. Um, I kind of compressed the angle aluminum or angle iron on this side. And just kind of hold it like this and it's either side I go, it's pretty much perfectly straight. So I couldn't be happier. Um, I think sometimes I luck my way into these things because honestly I have no idea what I'm doing, but this time uh, luck was on my side. Uh, I did end up having to drill out uh, about four or five rivets, which I hadn't had to do before in the trailing edges or back rooting in general. Um, I think it's because I just wasn't pushing it down hard enough on the back rivet plate. Other than that, it went pretty smoothly. So now all I need to do to finish up the rudder is I need to rivet on the uh, spar, um, connect the spar to the uh, shear cap. So I think I might have done that. Uh, nope, I didn't. Um, and in general, just kind of finish riveting this thing up. Then I need to roll these front edges uh, and rivet those. And then I'm done. So I think I probably have about an hour or two, maybe two hours, maybe three hours. I'm usually optimistic on this uh, work left and I'm finished with this sucker. And that's a major milestone for me. So I'm gonna uh, start doing that. And um, yeah, just basic riveting from this point on. finish with the rudder. Overall, I really like how it turned out. Um, I feel like I've gotten my riveting skills to where they need to be. Um, the trailing edge turned out to be absolutely straight. Couldn't be happier with that. And at least in terms of how the trim tab turned out uh, from a construction standpoint, I like it. Um, I think it should work okay. Uh, obviously, I haven't actually flown with it yet, and so maybe it won't work well. But one of the things I like about this design is I can alter it. Um, if the trim tab itself turns out to be a little bit too big, I can cut it back. If I decide I don't want to do this trim tab thing anymore, I can just take this thing off. It's not like I have to make a new rudder. So I'm happy with how it turned out. Anyway, that's it for the whole rudder build. Um, now I get to put this thing in storage uh, until, I don't know, years from now when I actually put it on hopefully a functioning airplane. Um, my wing kit came. I'm now gonna start working on putting that thing together. I'm probably gonna take a hiatus from making videos for a while. Uh, the wing kit has a lot of processing of parts that I need to do. By processing of parts, I mean deburring, priming, all that kind of thing. And that doesn't make for great video, so I don't think I'm gonna film any of that. Anyway, the next video you see, or the next video I'd, I'll probably put together and put up will be me actually assembling the wings sometime from now. Anyway, that's it for now. <laughs>